Hey there, everybody. It's uh, OBS session three. I'm here this uh, joined this time with Jim. How's it going? Good. How are you, Taylor? I'm excited to be here. Uh oh, look at this though. I got three dimensions here. <laughs> I did something wrong in my OBS setup. <laughs> yeah. Um, you're you're dro you're uh, you're dropping. Uh, this is foreshadowing. I'll call it foreshadowing um, to this uh, this smorgasbord of a session. It's now um, fixed, just like that. <laughs> um, so you're you're using green screening, and you, um, you made a little scene, and and we're, we'll show you. Um, we'll talk about green screening and and how to do that. Um, I've been watching the videos and not only I'm a long time subscriber, but now I'm a first time <laughs> caller in and I am thrilled to be here. First time caller, long time listener. Um, so, uh, yeah, this is, we're calling this in advanced techniques. Um, and I don't know, we could argue about how advanced all of them are. I think they're kind of advanced, but, um, but we're going to cover a lot of different things that you can do that are things that can interact with OBS, not all of them. In fact, almost none of them are like OBS specific. A lot of them are sort of just general video things you can do that OBS makes easier or possible at all in the case of green screen. But a lot of these things are just, hey, tips how to use a microphone. If you end up wanting to get a microphone, what, what, are you, what should you be looking at? Um, and accessory devices like the Stream Deck to control uh, different software, um, lighting, things to think about like that. So I've got a whole list. we got a lot to cover, and we're just going to go down. We're going to start with um, uh, something called continuity camera. And what this does is it basically lets you use your phone as another camera. Um, and this is kind of cool. I, I use it very occasionally, um, but it is kind of a neat trick when you want to use it. And I'm going to show this off first because we're going to use this throughout the session to kind of show folks uh, what we're doing and what we're looking at. Because some some of this is not software based, some of it's hardware. So you're gonna have to look at our desks and our cameras and stuff like that. Um, so um, yeah, so here's my, here's my OBS setup. Um, this is exactly where we left off last time. Um, we've got our camera scene, we've got a screen scene. This is just showing my, um, my laptop screen um, I'm capturing in. I've got another one that has my camera shown in the corner. Uh, I've got my uh, Jurassic Park getting started screen. It's a, in a, it's a Unix system. Um, <laughs> I know this. Um, and I've got uh, the beautiful getting started uh, scene that uh, Pilot and I put together last time. Um, well, we, we put all these together last time, but uh, this one I think is really the star of the show. Um, <laughs> in my I opinion. love that Reclaim Ed Tech mug, I have to say. Yeah, I think, uh, I think we should make real life versions of these, um, or for sure. Um, <laughs> so awesome. this is, uh, this is, uh, this is where I left off. So I, I haven't changed literally anything since last time. Um, what I'm going to do is we're going to set up a quick thing to use my phone as another camera wirelessly, which is super cool. Um, you could also, if you don't have a, a very good webcam or you're just looking for like better quality but you don't want to invest in a fancy webcam or a fancy camera, um, they actually sell little mounts um, that you can put like on top of your monitor or onto like a tripod screw thing. And you could use your phone as a webcam all the time. Um, Obviously, the downside being now your phone is on your monitor. <laughs> um, but, you know, maybe you got an old phone. Maybe you don't mind disconnecting it and stuff like that. Um, but I love to use it as a wireless camera that I can just point at stuff. Um, and I think it's really cool. So I'm going to make a new scene. I'm going to call this um, iPhone. And it's a blank scene. And this first thing I'm going to do is using continuity camera, which is only going to work if you're on macOS Ventura, which is the most recent macOS that came out at the end of last year, and you have an iPhone. I'm going to show you something that works across more platforms just in a second. But um, So continuity camera. So basically, it's a feature that it, your phone just shows up as a available camera source in your list of cameras on macOS. Uh, and there's really no setup to it. You just have to be installed. You just have to have 
the most recent software, and you have to be logged into the same Apple ID on both devices, pretty much. So if I go to app uh, add source here and video capture device, I'll call this phone camera. Or maybe I'll call it continuity camera, I guess. It doesn't actually matter what I call it, but um, that's just the name of the feature. And then I go to device. I've got a couple different devices and things here, but two of them are listed from my phone. One of them is a desk view, and I'm not going to really demo that because it doesn't really work for my desk. But there is, they do try to do a thing with certain phones where it'll try to make like a fake um, uh, document camera, which is kind of neat. Um, and it does it with some real clever trickery, but you need to have your phone a certain distance from the spot in your desk. And it, I don't have a large enough desk for that. So um, I don't really end up using that, but I'm going to just hit the one that says camera. And um, there we go. <laughs> That's it. Now, I didn't do anything on my phone. My phone just automatically uh, woke up and turned the camera on. So I'm going to hit OK, and here's my scene. And if I back up here, you probably have trouble hearing me, so I'll kind of yell, but this is my desk. Um, I've got my portrait monitor over there. I've got my main monitor here and my laptop, um, file cabinet. There's my camera. There's my lights. We'll talk about lighting later, but this is my, my light. Um, my microphone, stream deck, which we'll talk about later. I've got my gear, audio gear, um, and then don't look below my desk because I currently am tearing it <laughs> apart. It's a disaster down there. Uh, <laughs> I just had to replace um, my uh, headphone uh, amp, so um, all of the cables are a mess down there. <laughs> so that's continuity camera. So what I like about that is, A, that works in any app, not just OBS. You can switch to it. But in OBS, you can add it as a scene. And as soon as you fire OBS up, your phone will switch into continuity camera ready to go. So you can just, I can just go to my list here and let's take a look at my cat maybe. Just switch to <laughs> iPhone and there we go. <laughs> um, and it's kind of a neat it's kind of a neat trick, I think. Um, so uh, I'm a big fan of that feature. Um, and I love how kind of seamless it, it works. But like I said, only available if you're on a Mac and an iPhone running the latest software. So there's another um, more, it's not an open protocol. It's technically a proprietary protocol. But there's another tool we can use that will work on other operating systems and other types of phones and all kinds of different devices. Um, that does kind of something similar. It lets you send audio over your local network. Uh, oh, sorry, video <laughs> and audio over your local network. Um, it's called NDI. Um, I'm going to make another scene here, call it NDI. And um, I'm also going to actually, before we even do that, we're going to take a look at the uh, NDI website real quick. I've already installed this, of course. But to, in order to do this, you'll want to go get the free NDI tools from NDI.tv. Basically, you just have to give them an email address. Unfortunately, I always just give them a fake one. Um, <laughs> and then you can download it. Um, actually, I think you need to give them a real one now I think about it because it's one of those things where they email you a link, but uh, whatever. Um, and it comes with a ton of tools for doing video stuff over your network. So frankly, I don't even know. These are the names of the apps. I only use a couple of them. Um, and some of these, I, I'm not even clear on what they do. They're very much geared towards like professional uh, video folks. Um, so it, it could be a little tricky. But basically, what NDI tools, what I use it for, is something called uh, NDI virtual input. So. When you install NDI tools, you get this app called NDI Launcher that gives you all these things you can open. <laughs> um, and if I open virtual input here, um, this, is an, this is a very simple application with literally no user interface. You <laughs> interact with it by just going to the menu bar. <laughs> um, and what it's going to do is it's going to listen for other things running NDI on your local network. So I have installed a couple different apps on my phone 
that I'll talk the NDI protocol. Um, and uh, basically two of them. One of them is called NDI HX camera. I'll put it in the blog post. And I have one that's called NDI screen capture. And so one of them lets me do camera stuff just like I did with uh, continuity camera. So we'll do that first. So um, you're not going to be able to see this for a second, but I'm going to go on my phone, launch this app called NDI camera. I open it up, and then if I go to my NDI virtual input, it says Taylor iPhone 13 Pro is in the list, and then camera. So I have to select it there. And now in um, OBS, if I go to my sources and add a, another source here, we'll call this NDI input. I can select here the device called NDI video. And there we go. So there's my phone again. Um, again, Very this cool. does really the same thing that I just showcased, but it will work on many different operating systems, many different phones, stuff like that. Um, the other cool thing, though, is you can do more than just your camera with it. Um, in fact, it'll also capture audio as well. I'm not having it do that right now, but you could theoretically do that as well. Um, and so um, I can also do things like send video from my iPad or uh, another computer. Um, any, any computer can send video as well. I can even do things like um, use a different app here. So if I switch out of this for a second, I'm going to go into the Capture app. Then I'm going to hit Start Broadcasting in the Capture app. And if I go back to NDI Input, I can now go hit Display. And now it's capturing my phone screen and sending it to OBS. So you can, I could demo something. And it it's kind of cool because it supports, um, I, I don't know if this one has an Android version or not. I think it does, um, but uh, so but it again is supports. Is there any hardware devices. you need for this, or is it purely software? Purely software. Yeah, wow. um, but it is it is a like a protocol NDI is. So they make the apps, but other other software companies also make alternative apps. I just tend to use their own ones that this company makes. It's called they're called New Tech. They make all kinds of video stuff. Um, in fact, they're they're like really early to like streaming hardware. Um, they had these uh, kind of interesting boxes called TriCasters that were sort of like a OBS in a box, but in 2005. Yeah. <laughs> it was really kind of fascinating. But anyway, um, it's a protocol though. So there are other uh, software that support the NDI protocol. Um, there are hardware devices that can interact with this ecosystem as well. Um, but yeah, it's it's kind of cool. Um, like so, here I'm, you know, scrolling Mastodon. Um, I could also go into like my RSS reader, right? And maybe I'm demoing something or trying to do something live. It's kind of neat too because it supports uh, rotation, so I can rotate my phone, and you know that still works properly. Um, yeah, it's it's really cool. I use this. Um, I, I haven't really had a need recently to do like live capture of my phone, um, but I have used it for vinyl casts. So I'll set my iPad up in a different room where my record player is, plug the record player into my iPad, and use NDI to get that audio to my computer, which is in my office, which is kind of cool. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, and NDI is a whole ecosystem basically, but. Um, I'll link the three apps I use, the NDI Capture, NDI uh, Camera, which are the phone apps, and then the NDI Tools website in our blog post for folks that want to try it out. But it's cool, uh, and I really like the use case of it with, with OBS a lot. So um, it's kind of neat. Uh, I saw you playing around with a different camera. Was that using... Um, uh, something similar to NDI or were you setting up NDI itself or? No, I was actually, so as you were talking, I was looking at your setup and I tried to use a application called Epoch or Epoch Cam mm -hmm. and I've been having issues with it. So I'm interested in the NDI. I didn't update the software, but I was going to show off my lighting and camera eventually. So to do that, given I don't have an extra camera, I was like, oh, I'll use screen share in the thing we're using to stream this out, which is StreamYard. 
Oh, I couldn't sure. because Google locked me out. So I'm uploading images I just took to OBS and I'm going to share them as oh, yeah. part of my scene. So there's another interesting <laughs> use of OBS on the fly is I can upload images there and it will just, you know, become your webcam basically. Yeah. Become my webcam. So yeah, that's, that's really pretty cool. cool actually. Yeah. And that, that's a good point. OBS. You know, we mentioned that you're doing green screening right now. Um, but you're doing that by piping your OBS setup into the platform where that we're making this recording on right now, which is virtual cool. camera changed my life. That's the OBS virtual cam. It's awesome. Yeah. I can't do that because I currently need to show you all OBS. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it, I can't have two OBSs at a time with, well, I've done it before, but it, it, it's painful. Yeah. <laughs> it gets very confusing do very quickly. <laughs> um, but there are, there are ways, but I would highly not recommend it. Um, and uh, so it's much easier for me to not do that. But, um, and plus for demo purposes, I think it's cleaner. You can see my OBS screen and this is what OBS is That's outputting. Perfect. And Absolutely. in some cases it's the same thing, sometimes not. But yeah, so those are two ways you can get video and audio from mobile devices and technically other computers. I haven't used it for this, but you you could theoretically have like, like like I know you've got a, a gaming PC that I think you you and and uh, your uh, son use in the other room. Yeah. Theoretically, you could send video that is captured from there to your Mac in this room and yeah. then broadcast it live. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so. I have seen, I mean, Tim played a little bit with the capture card too at the arcade with doing some pinball streaming. And I want to do a little bit of that with um, one of the old arcade games. And I do have an HDMI capture card that sure. will do it wirelessly. But this NDI stuff that doesn't need the hardware is a brave new world. Yeah, the, the cool thing, the, 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 the thing that's nice about this and the downside is it depends on your network, right? So... In my case, the the HDMI there's wireless HDMI transmitters. We used um, some at um, the May workshop as well. They're great for like 50 feet of range. Yeah. No walls. Like you basically need line of sight. Um, that's not 100 percent true, but but in a lot of cases you do. It's it's very signal dependent. Um, in my house, right behind like right behind my monitor is a bathroom. <laughs> so nothing goes through there. It's pipes, uh, you know, just ruin that. Um, so in my case, Wi-Fi actually works a lot better um, just because, you know, I've, I've got like two Wi-Fi access points and it's a, in my, it's not that big of a house. So like the coverage is pretty good. Um, so, but, but it's very dependent. And I will say that there are wireless um, and we can link them too. Um, I, I have... A set that we got for the May workshop that I know Tim has used at the arcade um, from um, Monoprice called the Monoprice Blackbird. And it's pretty cool. And basically, you can plug in an HDMI device and then you plug in a, uh, like a camera on one end. And then wirelessly, it talks to another box where you can plug that end into your computer or something. Yeah. And it's basically like a wireless HDMI cable. Right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and it's pretty cool. NDI kind of takes a lot of that hardware out of the equation, right? You don't need two boxes on either end. You also don't need a capture device. It's doing all of that. You just need a phone to run the app or, or a computer to run the app. I like um, that. No, that is that is super cool. Um, yeah. So, all right. So moving on, we got lots to cover. I know. <laughs> uh, Stream Deck is next. Stream Deck is the next thing I want to talk about. Um and I, uh, I think I mentioned this before, but um, I have for this course completely like deleted basically my OBS setup so that I could set things up from scratch. Otherwise, this wouldn't be a very helpful course, right? Um, and uh, <laughs> one of the things I don't currently is. have set up is my Stream Deck. I have it working, but none of the OBS integration. And I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. I'm realizing what, what is a Stream Deck for folks who don't know. Um, yes. let me switch. Hello. Yes. Let me switch back here to my phone. Um, and a stream deck is a little hardware widget, hardware device. Um, I have the stream deck plus, and so it has knobs on it, but most of them just have uh, a grid of little 
screen buttons, basically. Um, right. And basically, you can you have these buttons. You can tell the software on your computer what they should do, and um, they do the thing. So I have basically like a setup that I'm normally using. This uh, is just like I can roll a d20 because, you know, it's important. You have to have D&D <laughs> close at any time. Um, <laughs> I, can, I have a button that launches OBS and quits it. I have a button that shows the time and the weather. Uh, and this one can actually do some stuff where it can control, um, it's kind of having trouble focusing. It can control audio of individual apps, which is kind of cool. So All I right. can set up, um, if I'm playing music um, before a stream, I can turn it down. I don't have the app open right now, so it's it's yelling me saying, hey, that's not open. Um, but it's kind of cool. Um, and there's also, you can have multiple pages of stuff. So I normally have another page which is buttons to switch my OBS scenes. You know, so yeah. far I've been clicking on camera, screen, iPhone, and that's fine. Um, but if you're uh, doing this stuff on the fly and also, you know, doing a stream that <laughs> has actual yeah. content that you're focusing on, like you're trying to teach someone something, um, it's nice to have buttons that you can not even look at in many cases. You can just feel where they are. Um, so I don't have any of those buttons set up. So we're going to set up a couple, um, yeah. and, uh, show what that would, would be like. So I'm going to switch back to my, um, uh, screen. Um, mm -hmm. and uh, actually that doesn't, doesn't matter. What we're going to do is we're going to set up buttons that switch between my camera scene and my screen scenes. There's three of them, right? So that's screen and then screen plus camera. Um, so basically stream deck has this software. So I just need to open up the Stream Deck app. And uh, let me resize it. Oh, it's funny. It's too... I have the size of my screen cranked up so much for the video that this window doesn't fit on screen fully. Whatever. We're going to make do. Um, and what I can do is... Uh, there's a whole bunch of things OBS can do. Or sorry, the Stream Deck can do. But it has a whole section of... OBS actions, basically. So I can uh, grab one, a scene button, drag it onto the thing, nice. and then give it a, uh, it's gonna actually talk to OBS here in a second, hopefully. Sometimes this is kind of buggy though, I will say. It always works once I have it set up, but sometimes it has trouble like seeing my OBS um, stuff when I'm configuring it. Yeah, it, it's having trouble, so let me quit the app. Um, you launch it. Your stream deck doesn't like you. No. This Your is the thing. Stream deck that, wants more money. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's the thing with with these with these um is that, like I said I love the stream deck itself. The app you use to configure it is relatively easy to use, but I run into things like this a lot where it's like, oh, I have to restart it because it's just not seeing my OBS stuff. Um, it was just not going to work. It's no good. I haven't used it since I nuked my OBS setup. So maybe I, oh, you know what? It's, I don't have the Stream Deck plugin for OBS. So I'd have to reinstall the Stream Deck software. It puts a plugin so that it can talk to OBS in. Ah, yeah, and yeah. when I deleted my OBS setup, that went with it. Um, so you know what? Um, I don't know that I want to do a whole setup of it, but I'll just say that what you can do with it is you can drag buttons in here and it will let you select scenes and I can switch between the scenes. Um, Title them, put buttons. an image in so you yeah. understand it iconic. Yeah, it's a nice interface and it, it really does allow you to kind of visual cues to change scenes or create different effects. I set the, the one, the start and stop OBS that you had and then I had a few basic scenes and then there was a kind of like, you know, you could do the, I'm, you know, technical difficulties button. And that yes. scene comes up with a little bit of music. It's nice. I like it. Yeah. And, and there's like a ton of different actions you can, you know, it, it supports a bunch of applications. There's like a whole plugin store so it can support more things. Yeah. Um, and uh, we'll talk about lights, but I know you have some El Elgato lights, and those can be controlled with the Stream Deck. Right. Um, 
I mostly use it for fun stuff <laughs> when I'm not streaming. Just, you know, like, hey, here's the time. Just to have as like a nice desk widget. Uh, volume control, which I, I mentioned before, and that's kind of new to the Stream Deck. They, they just came out with this one that does volume control. Yeah, the knobs. Like a, a month a ago. New or a couple world. Months. Yeah. And then, I, and then OBS. And really all I use it for in OBS is switching scenes. But it can do all kinds of things. You could set a button to start recording or a button to start streaming. You could yeah. have it turn um, uh, filters on. Like uh, you could have it turn on and off your green screening, basically, uh, which we'll get to in a second. Yeah, wow. You can do all kinds of stuff. 98% of the time, what I use it for and what I see people on like YouTube tutorials on this stuff use it for is just switching scenes. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, but you could see the use of that even if I can't demo it right this second because I forgot to install the software properly. If I had this set up to, you know, screen, and I can just then from my phone let me pick that up i could just click the button and switch to those different scenes right yeah um so yeah that's cool that's stream deck um i don't know if you you kind of mentioned that you use it for some scene stuff is there anything else you're doing with it other than scene switching or is that most of it no that's most of it starting and stopping recordings oh, yeah. i'm just really trying to avoid clicking around while i'm doing a recording because for me that's annoying the clicking, I just kind of want a button and it's very close. And so it, it just, it's it's kind of like for me insurance. So I'm not sure. fumbling around. And so. it helps with screen real estate too, right? Because yeah. if you're doing a stream, uh, you want to have on another monitor or somewhere, the ability to see like folks in the chat or in the case of like Reclaim EdTech stuff, I need to look at both our stream chat and Discord, because people may be asking questions in either place. Um, yeah. And usually I have notes. <laughs> and I need a full screen to be able to capture, you know, for the stream, typically. Um, so for me not to actually even have OBS, like I'll just minimize OBS, right? I'll, I'll keep it down in my dock or hide it. And I don't need to see it because I can see the stream that I have open in a web browser to make sure things are working properly. Sure. Um, and so not having to have OBS up because I can click my buttons to change scenes is huge. And, and that's with me with a big portrait monitor, a big main monitor and a laptop. A lot of people are doing this with less screens than that, you know? Um, so yeah, it's, exactly. it's a, it's a lifesaver for me um, for, for that reason. Um, I agree. Yeah, I do like it. You can even do other things too, like um, you can have it do like arbitrary keyboard shortcuts. I don't really do this, but um, I know people that have like, that maybe like edit video a lot and they'll set up like the button to cut the time, cut their video on a stream deck with a nice little image and stuff like that. I'm kind of a hands on the keyboard home row kind of person. So yeah. I like to, most of my keyboard shortcuts, I like to just memorize and figure out but if i was doing a lot of you know video editing that could be handy i think yeah uh, so um that's stream deck all right going down my list that uh nobody can see the next thing on my list is audio um and audio has come up a, a bunch of times over, over these sessions and I, I think i've said at this point a bunch of times i don't want to go super far into audio and that's because it's comp it's super complicated. <laughs> However, uh, there are some things we can talk about. We can chat about what mics we use, um, if folks care to know. And I can also throw a couple recommendations out there if someone wants to buy a microphone, like we are using, like a desktop microphone. This is not the only way to get audio in. As we mentioned earlier, you can use your laptop camera. You could use, um, I don't recommend Bluetooth devices with OBS, but you could use you know, like even just headphones, wired headphones. You could use like a gaming headset. Um, I will throw in the blog post um, a particular pair of headphones and a headset that I have recommended to like many different people over the years that is like the best sounding headphones and headset combination for like 50 bucks that you could hope for, I think. Um, but yeah, if you're looking to get an actual microphone, um, 
Uh, Jim, do you want to mention what you have? Uh, sure. Yeah. I'm using, and hold on, let me see if I can uh, put this in here. But I'm using two. I have two different microphones. I actually have three. When the pandemic started, um, I got the, uh, the uh, what is it called? It's like a blue. It the, was the Yeti? A, the Yeti. That's right. A classic. So, yeah, I got the Yeti. It wasn't very expensive, and it was it kind of uh, it did the job it needed to do. So let me just do this. Can you still hear me? Yep. Okay, cool. And can you see? I oh, see you're your screen. The and... Other screen. Hold on. Let me see. I'm playing around with. See, I'm not just a a tutor. I'm a client too. So let <laughs> me do this, and then come here. And so here is a picture of my camera. So that's it. That's the Wave One. This is an Elgato um, uh, microphone that I'm using with my new desk setup. And you'll notice it's on a kind of stand. And that's a sure stand, which is for my other microphone, which is part of a kind of arm system called the MV7 that you recommended. And uh, I've been using, I have two separate setups. And so my son took the Yeti. I'm using the the Wave Elgato Wave One here, and this is about a hundred and thirty dollar mic. And then mm -hmm. the Shure NV7 is probably like a hundred and fifty, hundred and sixty dollar mic. It's pretty expensive. I think it's more like three hundred bucks or two fifty. Yeah. Uh, so and so and I actually, I mean, all of them are good. I really like the Shure MV7 because it was good for like focused yeah. discussion, and it kind of ground out all the acoustics that were in my old setup. Whereas this, the acoustics here are much better now because I'm not in this big wide open room. So that has kind of saved me a lot of grief. So the, the Elgato Wave works fine. In yeah, right now. I will say I, um, without going too much into audio, like microphone stuff, there's different style. All three of those microphones are different styles of uh, microphone capsule. Um, actually, that's not true. The Wave and the Yeti are more similar. Um, but um, but you're 100 percent right in in that they pick up more of the room for sure. Um, and the sure you have is a dynamic microphone. It's kind of very similar actually to this microphone in terms of how it works. And yeah. they are really good at picking up what's right in front of them and very little else. That's obviously not 100 percent true. Like if my my dog was barking, you probably would hear it, right? But um, in my situation, I'm in a not very big room with some, um, like there's a bookshelf <laughs> and, mm -hmm. you know, some things to soak up the sound. That chair has like a cover on it because uh, it's a leather chair and the cover makes a big difference to the sound of the room, which is really interesting. Yeah. But I have um, laminate floors. So there's so many reflective bouncy surfaces that if I use a microphone like the Yeti, it sounds really echoey in here. Um, and also it's not helped by the fact that I'm on a desk with two big monitors. My voice is bouncing off the monitor too. Um, yeah. So, which is gonna be the case for most people doing a setup like this. So I'm using a Rode Procaster, which is an XLR microphone. All the microphones you mentioned are USB. And that's what I would recommend for someone getting started, not even getting started. <laughs> Uh, from almost anybody <laughs> um, because the great thing about them is you buy the microphone, they come with a cable, you plug it in your computer. You're done. That's it. Um, yeah. It's not the it, the end of your audio journey because there's a million things you can tweak, but you don't need any more gear. Um, I'm using an XLR microphone, which means I have to plug this microphone into a box and then the box gets plugged into my computer um, and it lets me do some fancy things that I don't really want to go into it's its whole own stream if someone was coming to you and they were like what microphone should i get i have a limited budget but i want something that will work well what would you tell them to get? i would recommend the wave actually that the wave one that you have right now i think it's 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 frequently on sale for 100 bucks or less now yeah um and while it isn't a dynamic microphone so it will pick up more of the room it does have some fancy tricks because of this software that they have called Wavelink. And you can do um, like noise uh, processing to get some of that out right on in the software. And so the cool thing is um, 
you can tweak the way it sounds. You can EQ it. You can add compressing and all these effects that can, again, I don't want to go yeah. into it. It would be a whole session. <laughs> um, but you can theoretically, if you want to, do that stuff in the software, and it would not only apply to your OBS, but anywhere you use that microphone, which is really, I think, yeah, kind of cool. Yeah, it's nice. I, I do something similar with my box. Um, so I have tuned in what I think sounds pretty good. And anywhere I use that um, microphone, it works, which is kind of neat, especially in my case, because I use this desk with my work computer and after work with a with a Windows PC. And so the settings even apply there, too, which is kind of cool. The um, after hours setup. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll talk about what happens on the after hours setup. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, mostly just Discord and D&D, right? So, um, but it is kind of nice for me because I can, I'm willing to invest more time, if that makes sense, in making it sound good because I know that I don't have to like be chasing down settings on yeah, totally. multiple different apps and, and OSs and things all the time. So, yeah, I would recommend the Wave 1. I will say, Jim, though, I think you sound better on that Sure. I, I, I mean, this does, you don't sound bad at all. It sounds good. I'm just, I have picky ears and I can tell the difference. I could tell you switched, um, but. Yeah, I did. And it was out of necessity for the moment, given I'm between two setups. I do like the short too, also because of the, you know, articulating arm and the fact that sure. it has like a, a kind of, I do, I like that. That microphone, and this is totally separate when you're doing stuff like radio and stuff, I found like some applications are, you know, it, you'll find my audio is a nightmare. That's all I'll say. It is, I won't it go is too deep into that, but it can be such a nightmare. Go yeah. simple and go long is all I'll say. Yeah. And, and I will say too, you're also correct. I think this microphone sounds way better in this room than it did in the last room yeah, because of the, sure. the tile floor you had. And it was a larger room. And yeah, so I can definitely much manageable, much more manageable for the, sure. So yeah, that wave is one I would recommend. Um, I'll also put, like I said, uh, a recommend. It's just a headset, so it's not really a microphone, but it sounds pretty good for a headset. Um, so that's another recommendation I'll I'll put in the blog post, um, and that that is maybe the first place to start because you can get good sound for like sixty bucks, <laughs> and it will include headphones. Um, yeah, one other thing impressive. we forgot to mention too is when you're doing something with OBS. Um, you really should be using headphones as your output device, in my opinion. And the reason for that is um, you will otherwise... So, so Zoom and uh, Jitsi and the software we're using to record this right now has features to make sure that feedback doesn't happen. So that when Jim talks and goes out my speakers, my microphone doesn't pick it back up and send it back to him. And then you get a loop, right? Yeah. Um, that reduces the quality, though. Um, StreamYard, the thing we're using, actually does a really good job of mitigating that in a way it doesn't sound bad. But there's a reason people sound kind of like phone call level quality on Zoom. Mm -hmm. And if you ever like just open up OBS and hit record, the microphone quality is like way, way better. And that's because it's not doing any processing. But that also means that you can you're susceptible to feedback so if yeah. you're hitting stream the stream button or record button in obs or software like it really you want to make sure that your speakers are either muted or you're using headphones um it's just something to be careful about um knowing is half the as as half the battle yeah and then the other thing is if you do invest in a microphone, um, and yeah. so my mine is you have a little stand, which is kind of cool, but um, yours is pretty close to, to you, it like is. physically close to you. Um, mine is, let me connect here again. My phone is. Yours is articulating off the side of your desk. Yeah, I have a Elgato. Um, it's called the Wave Mic Arm LP, low profile. And I like it because it, um, it, it's not, some of these have like these big arcs. Like yeah. they're, it's kind of like, like a radio station thing. And that's cool. Um, we can't my, see it though. I know you're using the phone, but we can't see it oh, in stream. Oh, because I'm not sharing my screen. Whoops. Uh, sorry. Um, so some of them have these like big 
uh, articulating our arms, and that's really cool. I just do not have a lot of space here. I'm in the corner uh, of yeah. a somewhat small desk anyway. Um, so I have this little low profile arm that can fold up and go over there. And then I can just swing it around when I want to use it. Huh. It's a little far back. But um, I really I really like this setup, but I'm very close to it. So um, as you can see in the multiple cameras here probably, I, I have only like uh, about my hand's worth of distance between. Is that the secret to your success? That is the secret to good audio um, in, <laughs> in my experience um, is get a microphone, almost any microphone, okay. and put it in an appropriate distance from your face. Um, <laughs> and it's unfortunately a lot closer. And, and people do tricks. Even I do this. Um, people do tricks to make it look like it's not so close. Like if I scoot a little closer and move my microphone a little further, I can get most the same benefit. My microphone's barely in the camera. And it might not look, based on the force perspective, like it's that close to my mouth, but it is, <laughs> you know. But microphones in the camera is like the new black, right? Like, yeah, it's you know. definitely like Twitch, you know, like the yeah. game streaming culture has kind of popularized that. And I think that's just out of slightly out of necessity. And like, this is what people have to do. And I don't know, I feel like if you do what I'm doing here with my microphone's kind of hovering over my keyboard because of this arm, it doesn't really need to be in screen that much. And I also could turn my mic up a little bit and get it a little farther. But the more you turn a mic up, the more you're going to get background sound. Um, so it's it's always a game of like, how far can I turn it up before I start hearing like my furnace, <laughs> you know, or before like me typing. I don't know if you can, can you hear me even typing? Not really. Not really. Very, very yeah. subtle. So uh, you sh you probably can hear it a little bit, but I I've dialed in like how you know how loud my mic is for this reason. But if I had to crank this up, you would hear. Let me just hang, you know, all the time. <laughs> if I really crank on my keyboard, right? Um, so it's it's always a balancing act, and that's why audio is so tricky. Um, is, is. there's so many variables. Um, I did link to in the first week. A OBS masterclass and there's a bunch of things in there on audio that you can check out if you have questions if you've got a microphone or you're like looking to buy something throw it in the discord I'm happy to, to talk about it it's easier to talk about these on an individual basis I think than to make broad recommendations of this will work for everybody yeah if you're saying I want to do a desktop microphone like this I have some things, I'll ask you some questions like, you know, what kind of content are you trying to make, things like that. Um, there probably are other folks in Discord too that may, may be able to help with that too. Um, and um, But there are other, also other other paths too. Like I said, there's headsets, there's, um, there's also shotgun microphones, which are the, yeah. like uh, you put just off camera and point at you. And those can have all kinds of benefits too. Typically, those are kind of expensive, but there are some good cheap ones. Um, there's a million things. So audio is so complicated. <laughs> it is. Um, Absolutely. Cool. Uh, all right. So we are uh, getting to the end. We got two more things to talk about. And how long have we been recording? 45 minutes, 43 minutes. We got about 15 minutes to cover it. That's I right. I believe in us. We can do it. So first one is quick and we've already mentioned it a little bit lighting yeah. so um do you want to kind of talk about what your lighting setup what you're doing i would be happy to i am going to show you quickly my lighting so i just actually set this up i've had it for a while but i set it up i i moved office to a smaller office and so that's allowing me to kind of do some stuff and if you see here these are two elgato lights they used to be on desk stands you kind of can't see them, but um, there's actually something mounted to the wall. And I'm going to hide these wires that are coming down. And these are two articulating lights I can rotate as I want. My camera's mounted on the same mount um, here. And then you see there's the, the microphone. This is my setup right now. This is the camera kind of right over the thing. Cool. And that's a look at that. And I have a mic. I have a little stereo speaker oh, cool. coming off of it. But that's actually... I have liked these Elgato lights. Um, I'm I love having... that we can see you taking the picture in the picture. Yeah, is that great? <laughs> but I've actually had a little bit of an issue 
as I set up my new space, just because I couldn't, I, these lights are reflecting against the movie posters I have. It's fine. The green screen's up so you can't see anything, but there is some issues when I have a straight up setup. So I might keep playing, but those are the Elgato. They were like, I don't know how much, a hundred bucks. Um, the Probably the each. key light air, I imagine. Um, yeah, probably... key light air. Yep. They're wireless. You have a little app, the control center that controls them, whether it's kind of cold or warm and bright and, I can do that all from my phone, actually. Like, I have a phone app, the control center. I have it going right now because I was playing with my lighting to get ready for this. And it's kind of nice. I mean, there it is. Like, that's the app. You can cool. maybe kind of see it. But I can, we can get the not gist really, it, But you get the gist. <laughs> and then I can kind of just right here, ah, right? I can yeah. go really light. And I'm just kind of are doing that right on there. That's cool. And I go really kind of. Oh, a little bit colder, really warm, super, super easy to use. Yeah. Um, and I should, you know, should mention too, for folks who are unfamiliar, why, why are we even talking about lighting? <laughs> I guess, you know, lighting is really important with cameras and video yeah. in general. Yeah. Um, I, Jim and I are maybe not the best examples only because we are both using real cameras, not webcams. <laughs> so the quality is pretty good. However, any camera, including nice ones like this, but especially webcams, cameras want light. Um, if you don't give them enough light, obviously it'll be dark. <laughs> That's one thing. <laughs> but um, webcams tend to compensate heavily. They'll, they'll instead of making things look dark, they'll crank up settings, uh, ISO and crank down shutting, shutter speed. They'll do things to make it look at least somewhat bright in there. And that typically makes things look really noisy and um, uh, just low quality and also sometimes even choppy, depending on what they're doing. Um, so it can look not great. It, depending on what you're doing, you may not care and that's cool. Um, but I kind of like to get the most out of anything I'm doing um, and because I'm weird like that, right? So, um, and you know, we at this point, we do a lot of video at Reclaim, like, you know, a lot. I, I, I was, I, I was uh, kind of reflecting on that with uh, a friend of mine that was self deprecatingly being like, yeah, I have this stupid setup and I'm an idiot. And he's like, don't you do streams like every week? And I was like, uh, at least once a week. Yeah. <laughs> so more like two or three times now, right? <laughs> yeah. Between these courses and just like playing with stuff, like we do a lot. So, um, so, so obviously I care. Um, but, um, so my setup is I'm not using any particularly fancy lights, but I am doing three different things. Um, usually, so there's a window over to my right and I am very picky about what the blinds are like because depending on how much it'll put light on my face. Is that a big deal? I don't know. Depends how vain you are, right? But I could, I could close the blinds and get more even lighting on my face. Um, I like the outside light because it makes me happy. So I usually have it open, but if I'm doing something, especially with a green screen, which we'll demo in a little bit, green screens are really picky on the amount of light you have on them. So I will typically control my blinds behind me. I control, put them down. <laughs> I don't have automatic blinds. Um, so that's one thing. I also have in this room, uh, hue lights in, there's, there's three lamps in this room. There's the one on the bookshelf. There's the one on my wife's desk behind me. And then there's one on my desk in front of me. You'll notice that the one on my wife's desk and also the one on my desk, um, sorry, let me get my camera up here, my phone camera. Uh, I have them both pointed at the wall just to splash light off the wall. A, I like the way that this lights the room even when I'm not in video. It just makes the room feel warmer and nice. Um, and I keep forgetting to put my thing on screen. Here we go. Um, that's that's what it looks like. Um, but it also helps a lot for video. If I turn these lights off, um, it, again, we're, we're talking about picky things here, but my when the lighting in the room goes down, my camera compensates. You'll see a lot more reflections from the window to my right, uh, this one over here. Yeah. Um, 
And it makes a big difference. And it's uh, obviously daylight. It's way worse at night or when it's darker, right? A good example of this, Taylor, is like, for example, I'm going to do this right now. I'm going to, I have a two screens in front of me. I'm yeah. going to put one up and I'm going to go to like, I'm, there's a screen here and you see that my green screen is breaking there. When I do Google and it has this white reflection. Oh yeah. It adjusts, sure. adjusts the light of the green screen. And so it starts to break the fourth wall a little bit. Yeah. And that happens pretty often if you're not careful with multiple screens and it's a super bright white screen or whatever, it will throw the lighting of your green screen off. Yeah. If I close my window, again, it's pretty bright. It's snowing here right now. It's it's morning in Wisconsin um, mm -hmm. in the winter. So it's like snow blind bright outside. But if I turn my lights off, close this window blind, and do something like, I don't know, what's a really brightly colored, what, let me just see the color green, <laughs> help me out. <laughs> um, and uh, if I pull this up yeah. and you can see green on you my face see it. Yeah. and you can actually mitigate that with lighting. So uh, that's just my room lights. Let me turn my camera light on and crank it. There we go. I still have that green up on my screen as you can. Exactly, but the see. light you have to, I mean, but also as you're doing lighting, be sure to try it with if you have multiple screens or places where it's going to go bright quickly. Be sure you test some of that across your yeah. green screen because I've run into that a couple of times where I think everything looks great and then I change the screen and then the whole scene gets kind of ruined because the green screen gets broken or broken up in terms of lighting. Yeah. Um, so the other thing I wanted to mention here uh is um so my i do have one additional light other than the lamps that i mentioned and my lamps are smart lights so I, I have like a little remote for them but i could control them from my phone um the other cool thing is i can do i haven't done this with reclaim stuff but i can do colors so you know yeah i could do that um but mostly i actually keep them just on a <laughs> very specific color temperature that i think looks good with video and also i've noticed certain colors on my fancy camera here will actually put little lines in the image. So I have to be really careful about that. It's something to do with my lights, like the way that they work. I don't know. Anyway, so this is my phone, or sorry, my phone, my camera. And I have this cheap little Amazon light and it literally just has a switch on the back. Uh, I bought this thing for probably 30 bucks and it literally just clips into the mounting system on yeah. basically every camera. Um, and it's battery powered. I have it plugged in right now, but I will usually unplug it uh, when I'm not actually recording. And uh, yeah, it works fine. It's not fancy, um, but it's enough light between this. It gets bright enough and between this and my lamps that I'm okay with it. It's not ideal. Like if I really crank it like I have now and I get this off screen, you can kind of see that the the, the light is coming from the center, whereas you have a more ideal setup of it coming from either direction. That's kind of the ideal. Uh, but it's good enough for my setup and I, I haven't really wanted to go fancier with it. Um, the other thing I'll mention is, I think we're using the same camera phone mount, sorry, same camera mount. Um, and so if, if anyone goes off the deep end and gets a fancy camera to use as their webcam, um, do not cheap out on the thing that holds your camera. <laughs> <laughs> there are a million Amazon things you can buy for like 20 bucks that suck. Go get something from, what's the company? Um, it's an Italian company, I think. Oh, Manfrotto. Manfrotto. Get a Manfrotto arm yeah. that will clip. It, it will, you'll look at it and be like, 100 bucks or 80 yeah, bucks? that's crazy, but that's they're That's insane. Good. The best, just... <laughs> don't yeah. I bought like four cheap Amazon things totaling like 120 bucks ended up returning them all because they all didn't hold my camera properly until I landed on this so if if you get into this um, and the other thing I'll say is I I have a camera that has a little flip out screen which I really like because I can see my own camera at any time it's a small yeah. thing not no, not essential but it's something that I like um, so that's lighting, and I guess a little bit about cameras. Yeah. I actually turned down the light because it's a little bit, it's a little bit much for me right now. You got um, nine minutes to do green screen. Hey, that's that's probably almost enough time. <laughs> so you got your green screen set up. I'm gonna set up mine live on camera so we can see what it Absolutely. looks like in OBS. Also, I have a hilarious uh, kind of, I think it's funny, um, green screen setup. You have a 
Is it also an Elgato? We're, we're not is. sponsored by Elgato, I swear. No, we're not. <laughs> I'm using Elgato. Camera mount, Elgato. Lights, Elgato. Microphone, and yes, it's a, it's a, I don't know how, it's like six foot by six foot um, stand-up screen. That's almost like you when you get in a car. Like, like in school, I remember we used to have these screens and they would come up. It's got these little articulating legs that come out. You can store it away. It's quite nice. I, I love it. I guess I could show it. I mean, um, yeah, well, and I thought I'd pull it up. I'm pretty sure I know which one it is. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it, it's great. We had one of I these uh, when I was at SNC. Um, actually, we had a couple of these. They're not too expensive. It's 160 bucks, which, yeah. if you're unfamiliar, may sound like a lot, but trust me, it's actually not. Green screens can be really expensive. And um, it's pretty heavy duty. It's yeah, like it's a metal good, casing. It's, good. it's a good. It's a good quality thing. It's also thick. Like uh, yeah. light won't go through the back of it, which is what you want for a good green screen. The one I'm gonna show you in a second, light goes through the back of it, so I have to do things with my with my um, windows. But mine's um, pretty cheap, and also uh, yeah, it, we'll, we'll we'll show it in a second. But Yours um, is awesome, <laughs> yeah, in a very different way. <laughs> yeah, so uh, mine is, and I'll go set it up in a second. But mine clips to my chair. And it's great for a tiny setup. Um, it's also great for inexpensive green screen. I do have long-term plans. I, I bought just green screen cloth. And I want to make like a dowel and hang it from my ceiling so I can just pull it down. But I haven't done that yet. <laughs> um, so uh, this is what I have for now. So let me, let me set that up. I'll be right back. Yeah. Oh, guess you, so, <laughs> the best is it attaches to his seat. It's this bag. And this thing gets stored in it, and I just store this in my closet when I'm not using it. And it's uh -huh. like a tent. <laughs> like Batman! And it clips to the back of my chair. So, if I go in here... It's so great. It's like you're putting a diaper it's, on. <laughs> it simply goes on the back of my chair. That's some high quality video content, me putting that together, huh? Yeah, that was good. It's like you're putting a diaper on. <laughs> yeah, it's a green screen diaper for my chair. Um, <laughs> so, but as you can see, it's pretty, pretty big and I sit close enough. My camera is framed as such that when I scoop my chair back in, it covers the entire frame of my camera. Um, now, if if uh, you had a camera that was further away from you and you wanted to use something like this, you could crop your camera in OBS, right? You could totally yeah. to, totally do that. Um, so because the way I'm going to do this, you will see the green screen effect in my OBS setup, but not in my little square <laughs> uh, yeah. over here. And that'll be kind of good that you can kind of see that. That's so let right. me go back to OBS here. And I'm going to make another new scene. Um, I'm going to call this one... Uh, camera plus green screen. So camera green screened or something like that. Um, so let me actually move this up in the list. And uh, right now I need to add another video capture device. We've mentioned in the last one, the intricacies with adding devices multiple times and can when can you do that and when doesn't it work? Um, so I'm gonna mention right off the bat that if you're doing this on Windows, you will have to copy this. And you know what, I'll do it the Windows way because this will work on Mac OS and Windows. Um, you'll have to copy your original camera, go to your new scene, paste it, and then we're gonna set a filter up that makes the green screen work, but we can't apply it to this webcam here. Otherwise, it will affect the other scene we have. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna do it the uh, wrong way and then show you the right way in a second. But basically, if I go into right click here, it's not right, it's just maybe less convenient. Um, if I right click on my camera and go to filters, then I go to audio video filters, whoops, I'm wrong, effect filters, then chroma key, 
there we go. I'm starting the green screening process. <laughs> now the default settings seem to be actually really good for whatever yeah. lighting setup I have, but this is really, you have to dial this in typically. Um, yeah. I don't know. I must be, again, maybe the white snowy <laughs> uh, outside or, or the way I have my lighting, but you it can play good. You can play with these similarity values to make sure that it's getting out. But as you can see, like, all right, now you can kind of still see it, and there's also a green outline on everything. So I have to crank this up until it really gets everything out. But if I do this too much, I'll start disappearing from the scene. <laughs> so you have to be really careful, and it can be subtle. Like right now, you can see that the green on my it, from my like it's getting my teeth so you sometimes to, the teeth yeah and they look yeah. all black and broken it's like oh no yeah so you <laughs> really got to dial with this and you want to be conservative on how far you crank it up so right now i've got a little bit of an outline um and i'm going to get just far enough that that outline's not there too much and then you can play with the smoothness values which will help with that outline you can key color spill reduction what this will do is Normally, green when you have a lot of lighting on a green screen, it's going to cast the whole image green a little bit, like on your skin, right? Because that's how light works. It bounces. Um, this will compensate for that. So if I turn this down, you can see, actually, just because I have enough light on me, it looks pretty much okay, in my opinion. But this will remove green from the picture. So if you have a lot of color spill, it will color correct. Now, eventually this gets to just black and white. So, um, but yeah, I'm gonna actually, um, you know, honestly, I think it looked really good with the defaults. So I'm gonna yeah. just hit the defaults button and exactly. go back to it. But you can play with these. And the main things you're gonna play with is this similarity, smoothness, and key color spill. There are other color types. So if you have like a blue screen instead of a green one, you can do that. I see green most of the time, I'm sure, I don't know if you know, but there I think there are reasons people use other colors, but green is the most common one. Do you know? Is I don't there a specific know why. reason? I know I've seen some blue ones. I've never seen a magenta one, but Me I neither. don't know why. And as Pilot mentioned last time, um, they tried this without a green screen just by like saying, by turning on the filter. This is not like Zoom where it can do virtual background. It, this is, it needs a actual green screen. So if yeah. I set this to custom, and then like pick, I don't know, like a color that's the color of my wall, it's gonna crop me out. <laughs> because <laughs> turns out I am close to the color of my wall, right? <laughs> um, so I'm gonna go back to defaults again, but yeah. So now I've got a green screen uh, camera. So I apply this to my camera. And what that means is, unfortunately, this is applied to this source, not the scene. So if I go back to this camera one over here, you'll notice that this one is also green screened. Not necessarily a problem if you're using green screen all the time. If you wanna be able to easily flip back and forth um, you know, between recording sessions or something, you may want to do something different. Um, and I'll show you that in a second. Um, but you can also just go into the right click menu, go to filters and just turn off the chroma key. This is how you get out of green screen mode. Yeah. Um, I also mentioned that the Stream Deck now supports a button that will turn this filter off too, which that's new. I hadn't seen that before today, actually. I don't know when it came out. I'm sure it came out before today, but my point is the last time I was messing with this stuff heavily, it wasn't there. Um, there is a kind of workaround. If you want to have a scene where green screening is on and it's not in another one, we can use the same workaround we did with the whole rounded corners thing. So we can make a group and... I'll call this chroma key. And we can apply chroma keying to the group instead of the source. So I'll apply, I'll right click on this folder, filter, chroma key. My defaults are good, I guess. And there we go. So now this source has green screen off, or sorry, source. This scene has green screen off, this one has it on. This is all a setup thing. I personally like to have a separate scene for my green screen because I frequently don't use green screening. And sometimes I do, and I I like the ability so to just pick How it. did you do that again? You separated it by called it, calling it a separate group? I made a group, yeah. I added a group to the sources list, and then I applied the filter to the group, and then I put the source inside the group. It's kind of a hack, and I would say a very advanced thing. 
I think most people doing this are simply going in and turning that filter on and off. Yeah. But I like the idea of having this set up so I don't have to mess with that. Because then what I have is I have a button on my Stream Deck for camera and camera green screen. So it's just, huh. it's a little setup, a little goofy, honestly. But then after that, I never think about it, <laughs> right? So. Yeah, so I just turned mine off. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna try something real quick. I'm gonna go and add group, and then you're gonna call it chroma key. Yep. And then okay, and then in that group, which is chroma key, how do you get it in there? You you right click on the group, and then go to filters. Ah, got it. And chroma key. Got and then it. you will need to make sure that your camera is in the group, if that makes sense. Like you'll have to drag it in there. All right. So the camera. Huh. That is interesting. So the camera is in that group, but if I turn that group off, my it'll hide everything. Goes, yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of a neat hack. And one one other thing. So we've got our Chroma King set up. That's cool. You probably don't want just a black background. <laughs> so it's important to keep in mind you can do a lot with this, right? So I can, let me copy this, both of these things, and I'll make yet another scene. I'll call this screen plus green screen. And I can paste my... I've got my webcam in here twice, whoops. So I can paste that in, that's the chroma keying I had set up. And I can also go and copy my screen capture and put that behind everything. And yeah. there we go, now I've got my screen on the thing. So now I just need to resize myself here and go like put myself in the corner. That's interesting, those groupings. Oops. Yeah, I, again, it's, Honestly, I think it's an unintended way to use groupings, <laughs> but I do it a lot. I saw that tip on like a YouTube tutorial on OBS and I was like, I love it. Cause I, again, I, I think in terms of scenes, I like to have a button for every possible scene on yeah. that I would want to use on my stream deck. Keeping in mind that the list gets long, but I'm not using all these all the time. So I don't need all of these on my stream deck as buttons. Like I don't need, for instance, I don't put my getting started scenes on as a, a button on the top level. You can also have folders on Stream Deck. So yeah. I have a folder with getting started scenes in it um, that lets me get to those. But yeah, um, I really like to have that. Now, you, I've also seen people who have separate scene collections. So last time we talked about the idea of switching between scene collections. You could have a scene collection for when you're using a green screen and one for when you're not. The problem is uh, you have to remember to switch between them, and I never do. <laughs> so <laughs> um, I, I like to just do one big scene collection with all my stuff. But you can do a lot with this, right? Let me copy this again. I'll duplicate this whole scene, actually. And I'm going to call this one... Uh, actually, no. You know what? I'm going to go back to my camera green screen. And one other thing you can do... Whoops. I'm going to resize here. Is you can, of course, add... Um, images behind you or yeah. just like just like you did so let me just go back in here and um into my obs library where i save all my obs stuff and um yeah i could throw the edtech logo mm -hmm. on there in the corner um i could throw this like gif behind me yeah look at that that's cool whoops it's in the, it's unfortunately in the chroma key. Whoops. Uh, so let me throw this GIF grid and I'll make it bigger. And there we go. Uh, yeah. So you can do a lot of cool things with it, right? Yeah, totally. Um, and that's that's chroma keying. Um, so yeah, you know the the group hold the whole apply the chroma key to the group that. You know whether you need or want that is up to you. You may be more than happy to just have a a filter that you turn on and off, but I like to kind of have it be its own thing and then I can mess with it. Um, 
So it's kind of a neat hack that I like to show people, yeah. even if it's a little complicated. The green screen is awesome. It's fun to play with. You can do a ton with it. It, it makes it seem more professional. It really works with the layers idea. Like green screen is fun just to play around with, to, you know, while away in the evening to figure out th certain things. It's absolutely a blast. What else is on your list? That's the end of my list. I wanted to show one we other. did it. Yeah, we did it. I wanted to show one example, I think, of some prime green screening work. Um, and this is our understanding containers session. Oh, and right. we used, you and I didn't use StreamYard, which is the platform that we typically record these things in. We used OBS and a tool that we're not going to have time to talk about today, but a tool called OBS Ninja to kind of combine our video feeds, basically. Which is and, great. Yeah, and we it's a great tool. We could do a whole course on, you know what? Someday we'll do an OBS 201, and that yeah. will definitely be in there. Absolutely. Um, but uh, this is uh, what it looked like, and we could only accomplish this because of, oh, this is not the right one. I think we started this on session two, I guess. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah, the session, that's it. This is definitely it. Session yeah. one was just me, but um, we both green screened ourselves in. And the great thing about that was that allowed me to have my screen be full screen, and but we were still in the video. Yeah. Unlike now where we have to shrink the screen down and put ourselves in little boxes. And uh, we decided that was going to be really important for this one because there was going to be so much work with the terminal and text that people were going to need to see. And it was just going to be a, a good thing to be able to maximize the size of the content that we were showing. So not only is it a cool professional thing, but I think it also has some like real straight ahead pragmatic, or I guess practical is the right word. Uh, like I want the thing to take up as much space as possible so I can see it better. I'll tell you, uh, I used, I used um, what is called OBS Ninja and you can find it by just going online and searching OBS Ninja. It's a website. It's kind of easy to use. It seems complicated, but it's not. But again, we won't get into it. But I use that to pull myself and Shahira, who's a friend who we do karaoke with. So we have both of us. She's in Germany. I'm in Italy at the bottom each of the screen singing to a YouTube video. That's the kind of, you know, green screened um, pull in your thing. And OBS makes something like, you know, distributed karaoke for an example, really easy and seamless. Audio is always tricky. Yeah. Because there's always latency. But there are some ways to deal with that. But at the same time, you know, it really is kind of impressive what you can do with OBS. Yeah, and I know we keep saying we're not going to talk about OBS Ninja. Oh, here, here we go. You can see the limits of my. I love thing. it. That's <laughs> the best part of it. <laughs> when I turn the my chair. Wall, he just goes like this. <laughs> um, <laughs> Ming but, the merciless. Uh, yeah, Ming the merciless. Um, uh, which I don't have an image queued up, but anyway. <laughs> but, great if you did. Um, is that Star Trek or what is that from? Flash Gordon. And Flash it's, Gordon. it's um, uh, Max von Sydow. Star like Trek one of his... fans around the world are yelling at me right now. <laughs> yeah, it's one of his early <laughs> American like debuts and he played this great villain for Flash Gordon, Ming the Merciless. And he has this big circular like thing behind him, but it's part of his wardrobe. It's a very Italian wardrobe because it was done by... Uh, Dino De Laurentiis, and it's just, oh, there it is. See that thing behind him, that gold thing? <laughs> I always think of you as being the merciless with that collar, this huge green collar. So, uh, yeah, so, and I will say, so OBS Ninja, such a cool tool that lets you send video feeds over the internet. It's kind of like NDI, but for the web, basically. Yeah. And it works because OBS can display uh, web pages like directly as a source, which again I view as a it, very advanced thing. I, we'll cover that in two hundred one because there's some cool things you can do with that. They had no, to change their name though to VDO Ninja. Yeah, right? I think they they got flack from the OBS project because of the name. I'm not really sure why, but um, it's too bad because it's open source and like it's a free tool. And not like, only is it open source, it's completely browser based in that uh, it is a static web page. You can host your own OBS Ninja on shared hosting. I've done it. Right. Um, at, at SNC, I hacked up a version of OBS Ninja where I basically just deleted half of the tools in it. And we had faculty use it for sharing just their screen with students. And the idea was, in a in COVID, 
Yeah. That people wanted to share their screen with students so that they could view what uh, faculty were doing on their laptop screens, yeah. uh, but not be in a Zoom call together. And so I used OBS Ninja for that by basically Beautiful. just turning off most of the buttons and saying, go here. The only button you can click on is the one you need. And it was so cool because it's just a web page. Um, so yeah. all of the smarts that are happening there is actually between your two computers. There's no server that's like distributing the video in a way like PeerTube or YouTube is. That's right. Fascinating technology. I, I would love to learn why that even works, honestly. I, it's something to do with WebRTC and the browser codecs and things. It's fascinating technology. Anyway, we are uh, over time. And I know you got something to run to as well. But uh, anything else you wanted to talk about before we sign off and put a wrap on this OBS Flux course? No, it's great. You know, I, whoa, what happened? Blinking out of existence. <laughs> you you can't do that in Zoom. In no. The same way, can you? Nope. I mean, come on. Well, you man. could turn your camera on and off, but it would look it wouldn't I, work very I well. I can brand always be branding. Look at this. Ready? Always, always be, be branding. branding. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, reclaim cloud. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I OBS is a blast. And then the other thing, and it's a totally different discussion, is OBS does a lot of things that other tools that people use for video, like A10 Mini. And I kind of went into the wilderness with an A10 Mini for a while, but I'm back to OBS because it's just another piece of hardware that like, you need to do everything OBS already does. Yeah. I like A10 Mini for certain things. Don't get me wrong. For but sure. I and think, I think OBS is, is easier and more available. I think you and Tim did some stuff on the A10 Mini on a couple of different Reclaim Today episodes. So if yeah. folks, folks are curious, you can find that. Um, and the A10 Mini is a fascinating piece of hardware. It's not che it's cheap for what it is, it's but cheap, it yeah. isn't objectively cheap. It's so, like professional video. Like it's like s almost like novice professional. Like yeah, it's that prosumer know. kind of thing, exactly. right? Exactly. Um, there it is. It, so. But, you know, for, I would say, for anyone doing video stuff where they're at their desk doing, like, screen tutorial, sc screen sharing tutorials, things like that, I think A10 Mini is not the direction to go simply because you're not dealing with a lot of video sources. You're only dealing with, like, One. your camera. Yeah. And everything else is kind of like, I want to bring an image in and I want to bring my screen in. And OBS is amazing for that. A10 Mini is hardware is super cool if you're doing multiple cameras, yeah. maybe live video in a physical space where you're together with people and switching. And and not that it's the only use case. I'm just saying that's when I would want to upgrade to something like that that's sort of physical hardware. Um, but for folks who don't need that yet, um, OBS is amazing. And I'll also say you can also combine them. Like our stuff we did... Yeah, sure. Uh, the Domains 101, I, I'm pretty proud of that. The Domains 101, 201 that we did in May, we were using a device very similar to the A10 Mini, piped into OBS to add a special sauce on top of it, piped into StreamYard. We were three layers of video right. mixing um, to kind of do something really cool with like hybrid where we had pilot coming in. That's right. To visit us in a physical space where you, Lauren, and I were together and all share of our screens together and broadcast that all yeah, over it was amazing. YouTube. Yeah. It's amazing what you can do. And OBS for me is often the glue that puts these things together. You know so, what, Taylor? When you're right, you're right, and you're right. Fantastic. So uh, we'll see you all. Thank you for joining us and uh, let us know if you have questions or, you know, gear questions, whatever. We're happy to talk about it. So. Yeah. Bye.